What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Chanel. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the last video. It was our live draft for the E-Town Get Now round eight. It was fun as hell, great day as always. And now it is, if you're watching this, hopefully it's, oh, it is Thursday. I don't know why I'm like questioning it, but it's Thursday and I'm hoping to get this out for Thursday night because there's games tonight, baby. First game kicks off tonight. What I want to do is get a little sit start questions. People have been, you know, emailing me or, or tweeting me or commenting on the YouTube channel, you know, who, who to start here, who to start there. So I want to get as many of those out here for you guys as I possibly can. I'm not sure what the format of my videos are going to be going forward, like mid-season. From week to week, if I'm going to do one long video kind of recapping last week and going forward with like notes that I kind of took away from the week or if I'm going to do sit starts. I think most of the sit start kind of questions I'm going to keep to social media like Twitter and whatnot, just to answer you on there. But for now, I want to do this for you guys just to get something out and hopefully help those that need help. I know a lot of y'all do. Let's kick it off, baby. All right, one more thing before we jump into the video. Something that's, that will probably help a ton of you guys out. So, <clears throat> Pro Football Focus is like one of those websites like, so if you ever like reading an article and they're like, oh, this player X had, you know, the third most yards after contact within the, the red zone or some shit last year, like some crazy ass stats and you're like, how do you even figure that shit out? You guys are ridiculous. Like Pro Football Focus is one of those websites and they have, um, they have like these, it's called the gold package there. You have to pay for it and it comes with a bunch of cool like tools for the fantasy season. And they usually cost 40 bucks, but if you go on their website, they have, you can get the fantasy gold free if you sign up for FanDuel and you literally all you have to do is deposit uh, $10 into your fan. Well, you have to, it has to be a new FanDuel account. So I get, you could literally just create a new email or whatever and start it. And you, uh, you, Start your account with 10 bucks on FanDuel and you get access to the Fantasy Gold on here, which is normally 40 bucks. And I'm not, like, in no way am I affiliated to Pro Football Focus. I'm doing this just to help you guys out and shit. Um, it's for you hippie motherfuckers that probably think I make money off this. I do not. Uh, this is a really, really, really good tool. And these are some of the things that it comes with, you know. Um, projections, uh, the Fantasy Guide, and, like, you can look at all these, like, in-depth stats throughout the year. It gives you, like... You know, like all this crazy shit if you wanted to look into it. The best thing on here is without a doubt the wide receiver cornerback chart. So if you're if you're like trying to decide between sit start, you know, like Larry Fitzgerald versus fucking, I don't know, um, Alshon Jeffrey or whatever it is. <clears throat> here it basically breaks down all the receivers and it, it's they put this up every single week. It'll tell you that the, uh, the receiver... Uh, where they run their routes, like if they're the left receiver, or the slot, or the right receiver, and then it tells you the cornerback that will be covering them based on you know the percentages of where they cover people, like percentage wise. So you can, and it has the grades for each person, like Malcolm Butler for New England, eighty three. The I mean the redder it is, the better. The redder the better. <clears throat> Not when you're in a period. Redder it is, the better in terms of cor uh, cornerback play. So you have like uh, you have. Sorry, my mom just texted me. So you have like Malcolm Butler is just uh, like a stud and he's going to be covering John Brown. So maybe John Brown is not a good matchup this week, but you have guys like, and you could sort it by like advantage. So you could see who's the worst uh, people to start this week and who are the best. So you see like Brandon Marshall is going to be going against Dre Ker Kirkpatrick and he's fucking terrible so Brandon Marshall's like a must start this week things like that help you break the tiebreaker I hope that makes sense but yeah go to profootballfocus.com you you'll find like the ad somewhere on the page uh, click on it and sign up for FanDuel ten dollar deposit gets you all this free stuff for the entire year and I could not say better shit about it it's really 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 helpful especially when you're trying to figure out you know sit starts in terms of wide receivers so the first question comes from one of my Twitter followers Don at SF underscore game, he asks James White or Christine Michael 0.5 PPR. This is actually a tough one. It made me think a lot. Uh, I'm going to go with Christine Michael here. All the reports have been saying uh, Rawls is going to be eased back in. Who knows how many carries he's going to get, how many snaps he's going to get. Uh, there's been reports saying he might get 
six to eight snaps this game, eight to ten maybe. I'd imagine they take it easy on him. Um, they are ten and a half point favorites here. So regardless of what running backs are even in the game, they're all going to get a ton of touches. That second half is going to roll around. Seattle's going to be up huge. And uh, I, I expect them to just absolutely ground and pound, ground and pound, ground and pound. So I, I definitely see Michael ending up with anywhere from 15 to 18 touches. Even if Rawls plays, he can get 6 to 10 touches and they'd still both be viable plays. Or I'm sorry, M Michael will be a viable play there. Uh, as for James White, you know, that position is very volatile. I do like it against Arizona because I, I guess they'd be stuffing the run a lot. Uh, but I don't really, I don't like the fact that DJ Foster looked real good this preseason. Um, and I'm sure they're going to have some Tyron Matthew, you know, uh, creeping up and covering the running backs a little bit. So, you know, Michael's the play here for me. He's the safer path to touches and he's looked great all preseason. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I think Pete Carroll knows what he's doing. Next question comes from my man, Alec. Sorry, Alec. Uh, he asks Jonathan Stewart versus Denver or Spencer Ware versus the Chargers. This is easy for me. Uh, I'm Spencer Ware all day. I'm very high on him, especially for week one. He, uh, he played the Chargers twice last year. He averaged over 14 fantasy points a game against them. They were 31st uh, against the run last year in the NFL. They were awful, leaving uh, 4.8 yards per carry to to opposing rushers, and that Denver D is just way too filthy for me. So uh, so I'm staying away from running backs, especially ones that are not elite. So Jay Stu drops to, you know, an RB3. He'll get some he'll get some volume, he'll get some work, but that Denver D is too good, and Spencer Ware's matchup is just too, too, too juicy. Uh, Andy Reid's been saying that it's a stretch, quote-unquote, it's a stretch for JC to see the field in week one. Uh, so I'm uh, right now I'm looking at it as Jamal Charles is not playing, so Spencer Ware is going to be the lead back. I don't see Charkandrick West um, playing a role, really. Uh, I mean, minimal. Maybe he'll catch a couple balls, but that's about it. Next question from my man, Release the Kraken. I actually love that shit. He asks, better start. Charles Sims. Versus the Falcons, Julian Edelman versus the Cardinals, or Tajay Sharp versus the Vikings. 0.5 PPR. For me, uh, I think it's an easy play here. Uh, it's got to be Julian Edelman. When I look at Charles Sims, I, it's too volatile there for me. Uh, you know, he's looked good in the preseason. He's, I mean, he's always looked good. He's a good back. Uh, I don't think his value is too high until we see something happen to Doug Martin, until that man goes down with an injury. But for now, Sims is not someone I want in my starting lineup really ever, unless Martin goes down. Uh, Tajay Sharp, ton of buzz. But realistically, I mean, I, I need to see this rookie actually produce first. Uh, you know, Richard Matthews is going gonna, is gonna to get a start there alongside Tajay Sharp. He's a veteran. And who knows, Andre Johnson might eat into Tajay Sharp's snap count. I know, like, Sharp's been blowing up this offseason. I really like the dude. I think in terms of the season long, he's going to be a great, great, addition to any team, but for right now, week one, I'm not starting him off with a bang. He's going against the Vikings, who have a trio of really good cornerbacks, and I think the Minnesota defense is legit as tits. So I got to go Edelman here. I think with Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, it's, this Arizona defense is, is so good against the run, and no team is able to capitalize on, on other teams' uh, styles of play more than the Patriots. So they turn their run game into short passes, which is where Julian Edelman, Edelman comes into play. Uh, I mean, no doubt tough matchups versus guys like Peterson and uh, Tyron Matthew. Uh, but you got to think Edelman catches anywhere from six to eight balls here because uh, th that's got to be their offense this game. Gronk's uh, hamstring injury popped back up today. They said he's not full strength, so who knows if they push him. If they don't, that could be even more targets for Edelman. No Deion Lewis, obviously. Uh, so I, I see... Garoppolo looking towards Edelman uh, a decent amount, and I think Edelman is a clear play here. One more thing to add, the Patriots are, I think, six or six and a half point dogs in this game, so look for them to be sh shooting. You know, they're going to be passing the ball a lot, which is obviously both well for Edelman. Next up, look who's back. We got the Don again. He's a faithful. He's a big dog faithful. Keep him coming, Don. Keep him coming. He asks, James White, 
LeGarrette Blunt, Melvin Gordon, or Terrence West at RB2, 0.5 PPR. Okay, so I've covered a few of these players already. LeGarrette Blunt, no way I'm playing him. He He's only a good fantasy play when the Patriots are favored by like 10 points. They're going to ground and pound, which is not going to be the case here. Arizona's run defense is way too good. Uh, eliminates him. Terrence West, I'm absolutely staying away from the Ravens' backfield like it's the fucking plague. Uh, the only guy I actually kind of like there is Justin Forsett. FYI, Forsett wasn't cut. They released him because it was like a technicality and they had two guys that were injured. I don't even really know the specifics behind it, but they had to keep both of them on the roster. And Forsett actually came back with a better contract than he had before, including more bonuses and all these things. So Forsett, I actually think, is, is back into that number one spot on the Ravens at least for like early down work and things like that. So I'm staying away from Terrence West without a doubt until we actually see something that makes me think otherwise. So Terrence West, Noah Garrett Blunt. Now it's between James White and Melvin Gordon. I know you guys are thinking it's gotta be Melvin Gordon. It's gotta be Melvin Gordon. Uh, to be honest, I, I really don't think he's looked fantastic this preseason. He had those two touchdowns, those two long ones, but he went untouched on those. I mean, the rush was right up the middle. No one touched him for the entire 40 yards. The pass was out wide. No one touched him for 44 yards. Uh, so, I mean, I, I do think Melvin's going to have a much improved season over last year. Obviously, can't get any fucking worse than it was. I don't know why I'm just bashing on him when I'm going to pick him <laughs> as a player to start. But go with Melvin Gordon here as your RB2. I think he's the safest path to touches in this game. Uh, the Chiefs will be without Justin Houston. And Tamba Ali is on the snap count because he's coming back from an injury. So they're going to be a little bit depleted there. And I think Melvin maybe will be able to take advantage of some of the injuries and, uh, you know, this Chargers offensive line will obviously be improved because the injuries last year depleted them completely, and now they're going to be okay. So go with Melvin Gordon here as your RB2 and uh, and pray a little bit. Next up, we got a quarterback question from my man Free Jeezy. Free Wheezy, ho. He asks, Andy Dalton versus the Jets, Jimmy Garoppolo against the Cardinals, or Phillip Rivers versus thy Chiefs? Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, rookie quarterback, first start versus the Arizona Cardinals defense. <clears throat> Check, please. No no way. Uh, we're going Andy Dalton versus Jets. Also, no. Uh, the Jets pass D is too good. They will be all over Dalton. That that defensive line is, is stellar. They, you know, the, the Bengals are obviously depleted a little bit on, on their offense in terms of Pass catching weapons, they'll be without Eifert. They obviously got rid of Marvin Jones and Mohamed Sunu. You've heard all the offseason banter. You don't need to hear it now. Uh, I don't think Dalton has a big game here. And I would definitely go with Phillip Rivers uh, based on the fact that they are underdogs. I think they're, um, I forget what the spread was, maybe three or six or something like that. So they, so I assume they will be passing the ball a lot. High volume, high pass attempts for Phillip. Um, like I said in the last question, they'll be without Justin Houston, Tom Ali will be on a snap count. They'll be a little bit depleted on that defense. So based on the other shitty matchups, I think you got to go Rivers here. Okay, another quarterback question that you guys will probably think I'm a little fucking crazy for. Derek Carr at New Orleans or Cam Newton, last year's number one fantasy quarterback against the Denver Broncos. I'm going Derek Carr here all day. Cam's like, I know you picked him early. He's probably the first quarterback off the board. I'm not playing him this week. There's probably 10 to 12 options I would take before him. And Derek Carr is easily one of them. We saw Cam struggle mightily in the Super Bowl last year. Dude went 18 for 41. No touchdowns. An interception. I see a lot of that kind of same game flow happening again this year. That Denver defense looked ridiculous this preseason. They're 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 absolutely the goat when it comes to the defenses. They set the standard right now. Uh, I, I'm you know it's going to be hard for me to even start a quarterback this entire year against them. Uh, that being said, Derek Carr is in New Orleans. He's going to be in a dome. The over under for that game is 51 right now, which is the highest of any game in the NFL for Week One. So you got to think it's shoot out, shoot 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 shoot. Uh, you know, there's going to be points scored left and right there. So I, I think this is a, I think this is an, a layup here, Derek Carr. Quick interlude before I get to the next question. So I get a notification the other day on my Twitter account, the Big Dogs Twitter account, 
and it's like, you know, these people have followed you, a new person followed you. So one of the guys that followed me, I went to his profile, and I'm like, I see his pin, you know, you could like pin one of your tweets up top, and I see a, a meme, I guess, I don't know if it started as a meme or a tweet, and I see it pinned to the top of his profile, and it's, it's this meme, it's like when you cat stuck and you throw ham on it, and I'm like, when, when I first saw this, like I lost my mind, I thought it was the funniest meme of all time, and I'm like, no way, the goat, this dude is the fucking goat, if he actually created this, is following me on Twitter. So I was like about to reach out to him. Like I saw it first and it was pinned and it wasn't like a retweet or anything, you know what I mean? It was like top of his profile and had like 20,000 retweets and a billion favorites and whatever. Um, and I'm like, word, like no way, like the goat is following me on Twitter. So I go back like a day later because I'm like, I gotta like reach out to this guy and talk to him and then I can't find him. I, like he's not there anymore. So like, I don't know if I was dreaming this because this would have been like, Christmas morning for me because I that that meme actually like literally killed me the first time I saw it I sent it to like my sister and like <laughs> half my friends and shit and now I like I could have sworn the dude followed me so please if you're the like the creator of the cat with the ham on it and you actually follow me on Twitter I hope this isn't just a dream because this is fucking wild if it is I mean this is like psycho if it is but if that was you please like DM me or comment on this video or like uh, yo, you know, I'm gonna 172 Dyer Ave, Emerson, New Jersey, bro. Like, come to my house and hang out with me or some shit. You're the fucking man. Anyway, sorry for that rant. Next question. While we were on Derek Carr, I get a question from Weston, Smith and Weston. Eating nuggets with my Smith and Weston. Uh, I get a question for Weston, Derek Carr or Kirk Cousins. Yeah, I love Kirk Cousins this year. I think he's going to blow up as a fantasy quarterback, but I don't think you can uh, pass up a matchup with the Saints. Derek Carr, I think any like semi-competent quarterback can put up ridiculous numbers. Their defense is terrible. They let up the most fantasy points to quarterbacks last year. Again, they're going to be in the Dome. They have the highest over-under of any game this week. Uh, so I think Derek Carr, <clears throat> Derek Carr, working on that core. Derek Carr's floor is like a safe 20 points. I think his ceiling, I think he can throw for 300 yards, three touchdowns this week. So stick with Carr. I do like, hold on to Cousins for sure though. He'll have some good matchups in the NFC East. All right, next question comes in from Jason Quinn. What's up, Jason? Standard league needs one running back and one flex. Thomas Rawls, Matt Jones, Jeremy Hill, Danny Woodhead, Tajay Sharp, Kamar Aiken, Jared Cook. Jesus Christ. It's like 40 dudes. This is, these are the toughest questions because there's like a 99% chance I'm going to get this wrong because it's so hard to choose between eight guys and just pick the right ones. Uh, regardless, you have to play someone, right? So my thoughts here would be Jeremy Hill and Danny Woodhead. So I, I, I'm a big believer in Jeremy Hill this year. I think he's actually going to have a big bounce back to his kind of rookie self. Maybe not quite there where he was just absolutely dominant, but... I think Jeremy Hill is going to be nice, and I think uh, this is going to be like a real grinded out game between the Bengals and the, and the Jets. I know their run defense is solid, but I think uh, Jeremy Hill could definitely wind up with, with a touchdown there. I don't know. I just I just believe in Jeremy Hill's talent, so I'm not going to sit him for someone like Jared Cook or Tajay Sharp or something like that. I think he's in a whole other tier than them. Let's go with Jeremy Hill, especially in a standard league. And then Danny Woodhead, my thoughts are that the Chargers should be down a lot. Uh, so I, I think Philip Rivers will be passing the ball a lot. I think Danny Woodhead is probably their best red zone weapon outside of maybe Antonio Gates. He should see a ton of snaps, probably 50-50 split between Woodhead and Melvin Gordon, especially if they're trailing, then he'll get way more snaps than him. Um, so I, I like Woodhead there, even in a standard league, because he's such a good goal line weapon. There's a, there's a decent chance he gets in there. You know, I already touched on Tajay Sharp. I don't want to throw a rookie in there. Matt Jones. Uh, you know, I like Matt Jones. He would have been my number three pick here. But I think the running back situation in the Redskins is, is, is way too murky. It's as clear as mud right now. You know, uh, his backup, Rob Kelly, played really well this preseason. Chris Thompson is going to take all the passing down work there, basically. So I think with Matt Jones, you're kind of banking on a touchdown there. And I don't know. Um, you know, I mean, it's definitely possible. I... I but I like Hill over Matt Jones there. So stick with uh, Jeremy Hill, stick with Danny Woodhead, and hopefully we find some, some pay dirt action there for you. And the last question 
comes from my boy, Kyle <clears throat> Black. Yeah, Kyle, I know you didn't want to be on the video. He says he doesn't like being in the limelight, so I figured I'd put his ass in the video. He asks, for my flex, I got Kelvin Benjamin, Jordan Matthews, Danny Woodhead, LeGarrette Blunt, Deshaun Jackson, Michael Thomas. And I know it's .5 PPR because I'm in the league with him. I actually might even be playing his ass, I don't even know. Um, he said, I think Kelvin, right? Wrong! I am not on the Kelvin bandwagon at all this year. Uh, I, there's been reports of his conditioning issues. They're playing the Broncos, so their cornerbacks are absolutely stud. Lee, uh, I can see him being on a snap count. I also can see you know Cam Newton playing poorly, which I've already covered a few times. So Benjamin's off my off my list there. Uh, I'm not I'm not messing with Garrett Blunt. I already said that Ter terrible matchup with the Cardinals should be trailing. Uh, you can get Michael Thomas fits in the same bill as Tajay Sharp. I'm not throwing a rookie, and that's unproven yet. Which leaves Jordan Matthews, Deshaun Jackson, and Danny Woodhead. I don't trust that Eagles offense at all. I mean, Carson Wentz played like 14 snaps in the preseason. He's going to be their starter. No way. But I do like Woodhead this week, uh, but I absolutely love Deshaun Jackson. Uh, when he's healthy, he's a top 15 to top 20 wide receiver. He is easily the number one pass option in that offense. Uh, people are so down on him because of him being unhealthy last year. I understand that he's like a high ceiling, low floor player, but they said he put on 10 pounds of muscle this offseason, and it's shown in the preseason. He's you know he's going over the middle. He's he went four for 56 in the last game, and he didn't really play that much. So I, I think Kirk Cousins is going to look his way often. Pierre Garçon hasn't done shit in this league in like five years. Josh Doxson is not going to be a full go. He'll be on a snap count. Jameson Crowder runs those underneath routes. Same with Jordan Reed. So I, I think Deshaun Jackson is going to be everything in terms of that, the outside passing game and the deep passing game. And uh, I really, really, really like his matchup against the Steelers this week. I don't think they're a strong secondary at all. So uh, my pick right there is d -Jax. I think I'm actually going to be starting d -Jax over Jeremy Macklin in one of my leagues because the uh, Chargers cornerbacks are actually pretty legit. So, you'll hurt my feelings on DJX. That's gonna wrap up this sit -em, start -em, question answer, whatever you wanna call this episode. I think we're at like the 20, 21, 22 minute mark around there, so I don't wanna make it too long because obviously there's a game tonight and y'all gotta see this shit beforehand. So, as always, if you like the video, thumbs that button down there up there go follow us on twitter at bdge underscore fantasy fb if you have other questions feel free to tweet at me feel free to leave comments below or email me whatever the all that shit's down below um i'll put a link to pro football focus in in uh underneath here so if any of you guys i mean you guys probably are gonna put ten dollars into FanDuel throughout the season anyways why not just do it now and have the have the fantasy stuff you know for the rest of the season also, so I'm in uh, I'm in a softball league with my friends, and we play on Sundays at 9 a.m. We do double headers, so I probably won't be out until like 11:30. And you know we're hitting the bar afterwards, so I mean I don't I'm gonna try to answer you guys' questions on Sunday mornings, but there's like a 97% chance I'm not gonna get around to most of them. Um, so I'm gonna apologize in advance for that. I'm going to have to make sure I set my line. So this is going to be such a problem. I already know. Anyways, that's going to wrap up the video. I hope you all enjoyed. Feel free to reach out if you have any more questions. And I will see you in a few days. The revenue has... Party been, people. The revenue has never been so fucking gorgeous. You heard, the, gorgeous. You heard the man. Who should they you pick? You already know. Who Biggest sleep of the year. They should pick nice face lace, for real. Pick him. I already he's going in the 11th round. Yes, sir. It was gorgeous. Sleeper. Sleeper. Yeah, you remember him from last year, right? Bam! Bam!